Nightingale may be the Santa servant this year, but something tells me that she isn't the Christmas servant carrying the biggest package. Happy holidays everyone, Sobroni of GNA Reviews here, with a servant spotlight for Monster Energy's number one mascot, Saber Astolfo. We'll be examining his stats and skills, as well as going over pointers at how you utilize him effectively, and an overall grade comparing him to how he stacks up to the other 5 star servants. So if you're ready to stand under the mistletoe with Astolfo, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and ring my bell so that you can catch all of these spotlight videos as they go up and you can help out the channel. But for now, onto Astolfo's stats. Astolfo has a max HP of 14,248 and a max attack of 11,694. For a Saber, his attack stat isn't that impressive, it's well below average for his class, however he does possess slightly higher than average HP. Outside of the Saber class though, he does fare much better stat wise, with both his HP and attack stats being a little above the average for a 5 star. When it comes to his command cards, Astolfo has 3 hits on his quick card, 3 hits on his arts, 4 hits on his buster, and 7 hits on his extra card. He has an NP gain rate of 0.52% and a star rate of 10.1%. Astolfo's stats are well balanced both defensively and offensively, and he benefits from good star generating due to his high hit counts. His NP gain on the other hand is poor due to that low NP gain rate of his. Taking a look at his skills, Astolfo's first skill is Caster de la Gestille. It charges his NP gauge every turn for 3 turns between 10 and 20% depending on level, and it also removes all of his debuffs. This skill can be upgraded through a strengthening quest, which will increase Astolfo's NP gauge between 10 to 20%, and also generate between 10 to 20 crit stars, both depending on level. Astolfo's second skill is La Black Luna, Magic Flute That Calls Panic, Rank C. It inflicts terror on all enemies for one time, lasting for three turns, with between a 30 and 40% chance of activating, depending on level. It also grants Astolfo three hits of evasion for three turns. And finally, his last skill is Majestic Triumph. Triumphal Return, Rank EX. This skill increases his attack between 10 and 20%, his crit damage between 20 and 30%, and the star absorb rate of his buster cards between 300 and 500%, all for 3 turns, and all depending on level. For his passives, Astolfo has Magic Resistance Rank A, which increases his debuff resist by 20%, and Riding Rank A, which increases his quick card effectiveness by 10%. Astolfo has a quick arts deck with quick quick arts arts buster and a quick noble phantasm. His noble phantasm is Volcano Caligarante, which is a quick attack that deals damage to one enemy with between a 1200 and 2000% damage modifier, depending on level. It also seals their noble phantasm for one turn and increases Astolfo's own quick card effectiveness for three turns between 20 and 40%, depending on overcharge. Astolfo's ascension mat requirements aren't really extraordinary. For level Ascension, he needs 22 Heroes Proof, 20 Knight Medals, 9 Bicorn Horns, and 5 Dragon Scales. Heroes Proof are farmable at the Pirate Ship in Okeanos, where they have a 57% drop rate. Knight Medals have a 35% drop rate at the Royal Castle in Camelot. Bicorn Horns are best farmed at the Camping Ground in Agartha, with a 21% drop rate. And Dragon Scales drop at Nipper in Babylonia, with a 12% drop rate. For skill leveling, Astolfo needs 30 Knight Medals, 44 Heroes Proof, 24 Aurora Steel, and 24 giant rings per skill. Aurora Steel can be farmed at the Castle of Ice and Snow at Lost Belt 2 with a 39% drop rate, and Giant's Rings have a 49% drop rate at the Giant's Flower Garden also in Lost Belt 2. Believe it or not, Saber Astolfo is only our second ever quick 5 star Saber, the only other one being Okita way back in year 1 of FGO. On one hand, that means that Astolfo occupies a pretty scarce niche for Sabers. On the other hand though, it's tough being a direct competitor to Okita and Astolfo's stats don't really help him much with that venture. His attack and HP are just about mediocre for his rarity in class, and his NP gain is very underwhelming, mostly due to his poor NP gain rate. Statistically, the only area that Astolfo excels in is star generating, which he does do quite well, especially thanks to his high ranking riding passive. But stats aren't everything, and luckily for Astolfo, he does have the benefit of a completely stacked skill set. His first skill, Casa de la Gestille, provides him a 20% NP charge every turn for 3 turns, and it also removes all of his debuffs. It can also be upgraded via an interlude to provide an additional 20% NP charge immediately, as well as a burst of 20 quick stars. This does a great 
great job of making up for Astolfo's horrible innate NP gain. And because the cooldown is so short, he can rely on it for much of the battle. On top of that though, the cleanse also comes in handy for boss fights and tough content, which is what Astolfo is geared for as a single target servant. And the Star Bomb can also be used to fuel his other skills, specifically Majestic Triumphal Return. Majestic Triumphal Return is Astolfo's main damage steroid, providing him with 20% attack, 30% crit damage, and 500% Buster Star Absorb for 3 turns. Like his first skill, this one is also on a very short cooldown, which means that Astolfo can reap the benefits of these buffs for the majority of the battle. The attack buff is underwhelming though at only 20%, and it's just for himself, unlike Charisma. Similarly, the crit buff is a bit understated too, and while Buster card crits are generally a great thing to have, Astolfo only has one Buster card in his deck so he can't really make consistent use of his Star Absorb skill either. Still though, it is a nice set of buffs to have, and the high uptime kinda makes up for the low values. Finally, Astolfo has some surprisingly good defensive utility with La Black Luna. It grants Astolfo a protection from arrows effect, as well as applies a debuff on all enemies that has a chance to stun them once over the course of 3 turns, similar to both MHX and Abby's skill. Defensively, this is an excellent skill and it provides Astolfo with some good survivability. The stun effect, however, is a bit too random to really be a consistent and useful tool, but an AoE stun is nice to have nevertheless. For skill order, I I recommend maxing Astolfo's NP chart skill first because he really needs it to Noble Phantasm consistently, followed by the attack buff for more damage and then the stun slash evade last since it's a bit more situational. For a pen skills, definitely grab mana loading first because every bit of extra NP charge really helps Astolfo, and you can follow that up with the buff to extra attack damage, but his anti-rider skill isn't really worth taking. Astolfo's Noble Phantasm is a single target quick attack that buffs his quick card effectiveness and NP seals an enemy. It's a shame that Astolfo can't spam this Noble Phantasm because it's amazingly strong. The quick card buff is powerful and it lasts for 3 turns, plus it stacks with his attack buff so this Noble Phantasm hurts. On top of that though, being able to seal an enemy's Noble Phantasm is one of the best effects to have in a boss fight, so it also provides some good utility very similar to Ozzy. Saber Astolfo's gameplay design feels like it was created in a very weird and backwards way, as if DW just made a bad servant and then slapped a bunch of OP skills on him without any rhyme or reason to make up for it. The problem with that is, despite his skill set being strong and varied, Astolfo doesn't really have the deck structure, passives, and P gain or stats to take advantage of them. So he ends up just feeling underwhelming. His NP is strong, but because his NP gain is so bad, he can't really spam it out like other quick servants. His buffs lack synergy with his kit, like having a buster card star absorb with only one buster card, or having an evade that doubles as a stun rather than as a crit buff like most other crit servants. All of this leads to a lack of DPS compared to other quick heavy hitters like Kama or Okita. And because he doesn't have any party wide or targetable buffs and debuffs, he can't function as a semi support either. But as much as I would love to continue pounding Astolfo while he's down, he does still have plenty of merits. His Noble Phantasm is plenty powerful enough to take out most bosses, and the added utility of an NP seal and stun make him a good enough boss killer in general. His skills also have very low cooldowns, so he can remain consistent with his DPS and his utility, and he has very good survivability thanks to his cleanse and his evade, so he doesn't need babysitting like most other glass cannon DPS servants do. And he can even be built to be an effective crit DPS due to his high star generating and crit buffs, so he does have a variety of builds to go for. When it comes to supporting Astolfo, as a DPS the one thing that he needs above all else is consistent NP charge, since he can't really rely on his NP game. NP chargers like Helena, Nero Bride, and even Mosh are all good choices for supporting him. All three provide a good amount of direct NP charge, and they can also buff his damage. In Mosh and Nero's case, they can even buff him defensively, giving him even more survivability for tough fights. But if you'd rather focus on outputting more DPS, then supporting Astolfo with servants who can buff crit damage 
is the way to go. Santa Nightingale, Brin, and Osakabe Hime are all excellent choices for this. Nightingale is an all around excellent support for Astolfo, since she can buff his crit damage, his NP damage, his survivability, and she can even generate crit stars for him. While Brin gives Astolfo a much better star absorb skill to utilize for consistency. And Osakabe Hime not only provides good crit and damage buffs, but she can provide NP charge as well. Astolfo's Bond CE is leaving behind the sword for a moment. It buffs his NP damage by 30% and it increases his crit damage on his buster cards by 100% but just for 3 turns. Unfortunately though, since Astolfo only has one buster card, this Bond CE remains more gimmicky than practical. However, if crit damage is what you're looking for, Astolfo works best with CEs like 3 Anglers, Gem Magecraft, Talk on the Hot Sands, or an army marches on its stomach. For a more traditional DPS build, it's better to utilize CEs that buff quick card effectiveness and NP damage, like Imaginary Around, Black Grail, Traces of Christmas, or CKT. In the future, we have a very nice CE coming up for Valentine's called Chocolate Heaven, which works well on Astolfo because it buffs quick card effectiveness, NP damage, and NP gain, and it also has pure attack stats. For command codes, Astolfo can work well with any kind of crit damage buffing command codes, however I do really like Mages of Flowers on him, since it synergizes very well with his NP gain skill, and it just helps him out even more with charging his Nova Phantasm. Overall, Saber Astolfo is a decent and versatile quick DPS, but he has a lot of drawbacks. Poor NP gain holds him back from making use of an otherwise phenomenal Noble Phantasm, his awkward skill set limits his damage potential, and he's generally outclassed by most of the other 5 star quick servants who just offer more damage. That said though, Astolfo can stand on his own merits. His NP is fantastic for most boss fights, since it not only provides damage but an NP seal as well, his survivability is great for a DPS servant thanks to his protection from arrows and cleanse skills, and his short cooldowns and high uptime buffs make him one of the more easy to build around DPS servants. So all in all, Saber Astolfo gets a B- from me. Saber Astolfo is in a weird spot, because he can work well as your team's main quick DPS if you want to build around him, but small issues like low buff values, his awkward skill set, poor NP gain, and lower than average damage for his role really prevent him from being as strong as he should be. Astolfo really needs to rely on some strong supports to excel, otherwise he just feels like a below average beat stick. And those are my thoughts on Saber Astolfo, but let's be honest, you're rolling for him anyway because of that midriff and I can't blame you. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and consider subscribing if you really enjoyed the video. Join the party over at our Discord, chill with us on Twitch, and follow us on Twitter. And I'll see you all in the next Servant Spotlight. So Brony out, later.